It's a typical busy morning in the city, and the banging of a metal door shakes the walls of a nice apartment building. Inside, the place is messy, with boxes everywhere as if someone is either moving in or out. A quick look around this fancy building shows a scary scene. Two people are lying dead on the floor. Up high, on the building's roof, Eddie is standing on the edge of the balcony. He just starts to move his foot back when the loud sound of gunshots comes from the apartment next door. Eddie thinks his neighbor must have gone to see what the noise was about. Down below, loud cries fill the air as someone begs to get into Eddie's apartment. Eddie feels very sorry. Does he dare to jump? Go back to over a year ago. Eddie walks through the streets, looking nothing like the man on the balcony. He says he's a writer. It's noon, and he's in a bar, having a drink and telling stories to a couple of people about a book he's supposedly writing. The listeners doubt his book deal, and honestly, so does he. He spends more time in bars than at his desk, struggling to write even a single word. Months go by, and his failure to write anything important affects his personal life. Suddenly, his girlfriend Lindy leaves him. Eddie is shocked, though it's clear Lindy had seen it coming. Feeling sad, Eddie runs into his former brother-in-law Vernon on the street one evening. Their talk is awkward, filled with little lies and fake smiles. Vernon invites him for a drink to catch up. Over drinks, Vernon tells Eddie how his ex-wife Melissa is doing and gently talks about Eddie's writing problems. He offers a solution, a mysterious new drug that promises to unlock the full potential of the brain. Eddie is unsure. How could a drug fix everything? Vernon has to leave, but before he goes, he gives Eddie his business card and a free sample of an expensive drug. On his way home, Eddie is filled with doubts when he decides to try the drug. As he enters his building, he immediately meets Valerie, the landlord's wife, who clearly doesn't like him. Valerie starts yelling at him, but as the drug starts working, Eddie's mind shifts. He suddenly starts noticing things he usually overlooks. Details about Valerie, details about the world around him. In the middle of Valerie's rant, Eddie surprises her by asking, what's wrong? This catches her off guard. They start to talk, and she talks about her studies. Eddie, now with a sharper mind, remembers facts and ideas he didn't even know he remembered. He offers to help with her essay, and as they work together, Valerie starts to see him differently. After they finish the essay, they end up becoming closer in a way Eddie hadn't expected. Later, Eddie steps into his apartment and sees it with new eyes. It's a mess. Driven by the drug's clarity, he cleans and organizes everything until his place actually looks like a home. With his mind still very clear, Eddie does what he feels he should have been doing all along. He starts to write, and this time, he really writes. The next morning, as the effects of the drug wear off, Eddie wakes up to find the pages he wrote the previous night. They're good. He decides to take them to his publisher. Feeling confident, he tells her to read his unfinished manuscript, promising to return the advance payment if she isn't impressed. Eddie's simple act of trying something new has suddenly changed everything. As soon as Eddie gets home, he checks his messages. He has three new ones from his publisher, all saying his manuscript is brilliant. Eddie thinks about calling her back, but decides to visit Vernon instead. When he gets there, Vernon looks rough and pauses before letting Eddie in. Vernon quickly says he'll give Eddie more of the drug, but first, Eddie needs to do some errands for him. Eddie goes to pick up Vernon's dry cleaning and get some breakfast. When he returns, he's shocked to see the apartment door wide open and everything inside a mess. Inside, he finds Vernon dead on the couch. Eddie immediately calls the police. While waiting for them, he realizes that whoever searched the apartment didn't find the drugs. Eddie starts looking and soon finds not only the drugs, but also Vernon's notebook and some money. The police arrive and take Eddie to the station for questioning. The detective doubts Eddie's story. During the questioning, Melissa calls. She tells Eddie she doesn't want him at Vernon's funeral and will contact him later. Eddie leaves the station feeling scared, sure he's being followed. Back at his apartment, Eddie counts the money and takes one of the pills. This begins a rush of changes. First, he gets a new haircut and new clothes. He finishes his novel and gives it to his publisher. In just three days, he learns to play the piano and new languages, which he uses to meet women. He uses his new math skills to win at poker and even picks the best medicine for his aunt with cancer. He impresses Wall Street executives with his business skills and humor. Eddie's life is changing fast, all because of the mysterious drug. Here, 
Eddie gets a job offer from a rich businessman he met. He soon starts hanging out with the wealthy crowd, enjoying vacations at their big houses with pools and private jets. However, the excitement of his new lifestyle makes him crave constant thrills. At a turning point, Eddie realizes he wants something different from life, not just writing. Back in his apartment, he's closely studying stock market numbers and taking the drug to improve his focus. He decides he needs more money than he can earn from trading alone. To get the money for his new plans, Eddie meets a loan shark in a diner and convinces him to lend $100,000. They agree to exchange the money in a park, where the loan shark seriously warns Eddie about the consequences of not paying back the loan. Eddie accepts the job offer and quickly learns how to double his money. His success draws the attention of big names in the finance world, and he arranges a meeting with one of them. During a dinner with Lindy, he tries to win her back by ordering in Italian and saying sorry for past mistakes. Charmed, Lindy decides to give their relationship another chance. As Eddie becomes more well-known in the financial sector, he can't shake the feeling that someone is watching him. One evening, while at his apartment with Lindy, he feels unusually odd. The next day, he and his boss have lunch with Carl Van Loon, a key figure in finance. Eddie impresses Van Loon with his ability to spot big patterns. After their meeting, Van Loon gives Eddie a ride home and hands him some important papers to look over, showing that Eddie's role in the financial world is growing. After their meeting, Eddie gives his thoughts on the documents to the impressed businessman, who plans another meeting. Feeling energized and not ready to go home, Eddie takes a long walk to clear his head, even daydreaming about becoming president one day. But suddenly, he feels strange, as if time itself is bending around him. He wanders without direction until he finds himself in a bar, unsure of how he got there. From there, his night turns into a blur. He's at a party with one woman and then in a hotel with another. He starts feeling paranoid, thinking someone is following him. Later, he finds himself in a subway fight, discovering he can fight, a skill he apparently learned just from watching kung fu movies and boxing on TV. His night of running through the city ends suddenly on a bridge, with no memory of the past 18 hours. The next morning, Eddie wakes up feeling awful. He decides against taking another pill and tries to read the documents from Van Loon again, but they don't make sense to him now. He goes to the meeting with Van Loon without any preparation and completely sober. During the meeting, Eddie is distracted by the news on TV, reporting the death of the woman from the hotel. Feeling overwhelmed, he suddenly leaves the meeting. Returning home, Eddie gets a call from Melissa. She wants to meet later that day. He starts calling people from Vernon's notebook, only to find that everyone listed is either dead or very sick. The last number he calls belongs to a man who has been following him, who Eddie sees sitting on a nearby bench. Eddie runs, manages to escape the man by jumping into a cab. He meets Melissa, who tells him that she too had been using the drug and barely survived after stopping. Here, Melissa warns Eddie that suddenly stopping the drug could be very dangerous. Despite her warning, Eddie's health gets worse. Back at home, the loan shark shows up, eager to be paid. He swallows Eddie's last pill but doesn't feel any smarter, though he claims to feel great. Eddie goes to the bank, takes out the money he owes, and pays the man. After that, Eddie desperately reaches out to Lindy. He goes to her office, tells her everything, and begs her to get the hidden drugs from her apartment. Lindy finds them easily but calls Eddie on her way back to say she's being followed. Her taxi gets stuck in traffic, and the man following her approaches. Eddie tells her to run, and as she runs away, the man stabs two men trying to help her in the park. Lindy hides and calls Eddie, scared. Following Eddie's advice, she takes one of the pills. The drug quickly sharpens her senses, and she manages to get away from the man, eventually overpowering him and escaping. Lindy finds Eddie, gives him a pill, and they check into a hotel together. The next morning, as Lindy prepares to leave, Eddie tries to convince her they can handle their situation. Having felt the drug's effects herself, Lindy disagrees. She's seen its dangers firsthand and is scared by them. Eddie promises he'll stop using the drug eventually, but Lindy leaves anyway. Outside, Eddie sees the loan shark again. The man now wants more of the drug, so Eddie gives him a few pills to keep him happy. Concerned for his safety, Eddie hires two bodyguards who follow him everywhere. He then meets with Van Loon, hoping to secure his future, still caught in the mess of his decisions and the drug's strong influence. Now, Eddie apologizes to Van Loon for missing the previous meeting because he was sick. 
Luckily, he had impressed Van Loon enough earlier that he still gets the job. Eddie proves his value by leading the biggest merger in Van Loon's history, putting him back on track. Not wanting to run out of the drug that fueled his success, Eddie offers a chemist $2 million to make it again within six months. One day, while Eddie is having lunch, a detective approaches him. He tells Eddie that he has been identified as the person running away from the hotel on the night the young woman was found dead. Quickly, Eddie hires a top lawyer to handle the situation. During an important meeting about the merger with Van Loon, Eddie notices that Atwood, a key person from the other company, looks sick. They decide to delay signing the contract until the next day. After the meeting, Van Loon pulls Eddie aside and warns him not to become his rival, suggesting that Eddie's success is due to a unique talent rather than hard work. Returning to his hotel, Eddie finds his room turned upside down. Undeterred, he buys the fancy apartment shown at the start of the story. Soon after, he meets the loan shark again, who has been changed by the drug. The loan shark threatens to reveal Eddie's legal problems unless he gets more pills. The next day, as Eddie and Van Loon wait for Atwood to arrive and finalize the merger, Atwood's wife comes instead. She explains that Atwood is too sick to come, but promises he will sign the contract as soon as he gets better. Eddie and Van Loon walk Atwood's wife to her car, and Eddie sees the man who has been following him get into the car with her. She tells him that her husband's sickness is because of the drug. Later, Eddie meets his lawyer at the police station for a lineup. Luckily, he is not picked out. Instead of waiting for the loan shark, Eddie goes back to Van Loon's office. There, Van Loon is watching a news report about their merger, clearly upset and worried because Atwood is dying and the merger is at risk. Realizing he needs the advantage the drug gives him, Eddie looks for his hidden pills but can't find them. He gets back to the office just as a mysterious package arrives for him. Van Loon, thinking Eddie knows more than he's saying, opens the package only to find the cut-off hands of Eddie's bodyguards inside. Shocked, Eddie rushes back to his apartment. At home, Eddie watches the news where Atwood's wife is talking about the merger, but her words don't make sense. Her lawyer, who is also Eddie's lawyer, takes over the interview. Amid this mess, the doorbell rings. It's the loan shark demanding to come in. Next, we see Eddie standing on the edge of his balcony, thinking over everything. He decides not to jump and scrambles to find one last pill he might have missed. Just as he finds it, he accidentally drops it right when the loan shark enters his apartment. The loan shark's helpers hold Eddie while the loan shark explains how he uses the drug by dissolving it in a solution and injecting it. He takes the drug and orders his men to look for Eddie's remaining pills. While under the drug's influence, he starts to hurt Eddie for more information about the drug and where to find it. The goons are busy trying to open Eddie's safe, distracted and not noticing Eddie's desperate move. As their boss leans over him, Eddie grabs the chance to stab him. In a shocking twist, Eddie then drinks his blood, hoping to get any leftover drug in his system. Surprisingly, it works, and Eddie suddenly knows how to deal with the remaining goons. He quickly takes down one, then the other. Meanwhile, news breaks that Atwood has died in the hospital. Eddie visits the hospital and finds himself sitting next to the man who had been following him. This man, unexpectedly, helps Eddie later in finding more of the drug hidden in the lawyer's apartment. The same lawyer who had secretly taken Atwood's stash. Fast forward 12 months, Eddie has published a book and is running for the Senate. Van Loon, waiting in his office, confronts Eddie about his knowledge of the drug. Van Loon reveals he's closed his lab that morning, but offers to supply Eddie with the drug in the future if he agrees to work for him. They head out to lunch, but at the last moment, Eddie refuses to get in the car or work with Van Loon. He confidently tells Van Loon that he has changed the drug, managing to keep its benefits while freeing himself from its addiction. Here, Eddie declares himself independent and unstoppable, turning Van Loon away. Eddie then walks to a restaurant where he meets with Lindy, starting a new chapter in his life. This is where the movie Limitless ends.